Hi, I'm journalist Richard Burnett, and I'm here with an LGBT legend, the creator of the rainbow flag, Mr. Gilbert Baker. Welcome to Montreal, Gil Welcome to Montreal Gilbert. Bonjour. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell us the story of how you created the rainbow flag. I do believe it was upon the request, was it not, of Harvey Milk back in 1978? Well, Harvey was my friend. I lived in San Francisco in those days. Um, it, it, he, he was my friend and an artist as well. Um, he wanted a logo. Uh, really, up until that time, we had had the pink triangle as the symbol but it came from a very negative place, from the Holocaust. It was put on us, and we needed something that was from us. And flags are about power. They're, I think, more uh, useful than a logo would have been. So, and I love to sew, so that's how it happened. Um, originally, it was eight colors. How did you go from eight to six colors? Well, uh, the first one was eight colors. Um, when I went to manufacture it, when I realized it was going to be a hit, I quickly realized that there was no pink. And in the world of flags, there's about 20 colors, and pink is not one of them. So when I went to manufacturers, they would say, no flag has pink, what are you talking about? So I had to make a compromise. And then people don't remember this, but in the 70s, even to print uh, four colors was very expensive. To just even produce it as a, as a, a photograph was uh, complicated. What kind of love do you feel you get from the spectators and the crowds along parade routes when you're a grand marshal, like you are here in Montreal? Well, we'll see. Uh, uh, it's a great appreciation of my work, and I think it's a great acknowledgement of, of our struggle. I mean, the, the rainbow flag is, is successful because people own it. I, 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 there are no royalties. It's something in the public domain, and, and everyone has their own idea about what it means to them. But it is something that transcends language and barriers, so that we share it is, uh, is wonderful. I think everyone acknowledges that. So that love, that appreciation, is, uh, you know, it comes to me. I was wondering, um, because uh, the rainbow flag is such a potent symbol of gay liberation, how you feel about it being used, perhaps, by um, athletes in Sochi, and could maybe give us your opinion on what's going on in Russia? Well, my opinion there is conflicted. I mean, I, I, I applaud any athlete that has the courage to stand up against the Russian government. I uh, condemn the Russian government and the laws that they have passed against us. I don't want to see it used as a, just a prop in a Potemkin village, which it could be. Um, so my feelings are conflicted. I, I, on the one hand, say don't use it because I think that they will, uh, they will uh, exploit it. And on the other hand, I want to uh, send a message that it is important that we exercise our free speech. And that, you know, if you want to use a rainbow flag or, you know, rainbow nail polish yesterday from the Nor Norwegian women or the Swedish women, the power to you, I, you know, whatever. Self-expression, freedom of expression, those are the cornerstones of our movement. Uh, clearly, you do not want the government to use a rainbow flag, but if 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 athletes if athletes were to whip out the rainbow flag, unfurl the rainbow flag during the opening or closing ceremonies, well, I think uh, they will be in a lot of trouble. The Russian government obviously has a problem with that. The International Olympic Committee has a problem with it. So it would take a lot of courage. It would take some balls, quite frankly, to to do that. We'll see. I think more important than the flag is for people to speak up. I think when people, uh, I think there's a movement now for everyone to hold hands. I think that's beautiful. Um, so uh, flags are, are beautiful, but they are not the answer. The answer is our voice and our organization and the way that we have come together in cities all around the world to uh, protest. Um, I was also wondering if you could explain, I mean, you get no royalties at all from... I'm royal enough. <laughs> I have all my fleur de lis today. <laughs> You get no royalties from that, and is this really the the root of is this really the root of the potency of the rainbow flag? I mean, the I flag think, doesn't belong to you; it belongs I to the will, people. I think it would have changed it if someone had owned it. I think that, that that we share the ownership of it is is part of its great beauty. But I think that that's what makes it endure. It's beautiful. It's a symbol from nature. Uh, a, a true flag is not something you design. It's it's torn from the soul of the people. So. It's beauty, it's nature, that it's connecting to a, something magical, something universal. That's what makes it wonderful.